So it's maybe less that that person has a self-sabotage problem and more that that person needs to allow themselves to dream a better dream. Sometimes to even dream a bigger, more challenging dream. So I'll say that because I think a lot of business people and like academics in specific, we have this idea you got to start small and like do things, all the hard things when you're paying your dues, you got to pay your dues. And then like, you can't dare set a big vision or dream or goal until you've like accomplished the incremental component parts of that. Mm -hmm. And what I have experienced is very much the opposite that you have a unique in your wiring and design. There is a level of game you came here to play. And if you're trying to aim too low, you won't hit it. Hmm. You won't, you will not even succeed at the low little things, at the play small things. Hi, I'm Biz Cush, a life coach and therapist and your host here on the Awaken Your Wise Woman podcast. We're talking to women all over the world who found their way back to themselves, to their inner knowing, to their intuition, to their wisest self. We're exploring how to feel alive, authentic, engaged, and fully present in your life. Let's awaken your wise woman. Hi there and welcome, welcome, welcome. We are here. We are here, here, here. And this is the Awaken Your Wise Woman podcast. And I am Biz Cush and I'm so excited that we're here. I have an amazing guest this week, Tara Nicole Kirk. And before we jump into that, I just wanted to say hi, say here are some updates, say welcome, and I'm glad you're here. The updates are, it's crazy that uh, this is episode 13 of the podcast. We're halfway through the season and Looking ahead to the guests that we have scheduled, I am super excited about that. Not just scheduled, but some are already recorded, so lots of good stuff still to come. But in my world, what's new? I've had some time with family. My team, the Eagles from Philadelphia, got into the Super Bowl. As I'm recording this, it hasn't happened yet, so... I don't know. Are they going to win? Who knows? We will see. And I've had some shifts in my business, which I talked a little bit about last time on the podcast here. So just trying to really feel aligned in the work that I do with what I offer with the women that I serve. And I'm really shifting more heavily into working with highly sensitive women because I know what it's like to feel overwhelmed and oversensitized because of our high sensitivity. And I would love to help women work within those gifts of uh, those traits of being highly sensitive. So I'm excited about that shift. And I have restructured my offers. So I've lowered the prices and offered both three and six month packages because maybe everybody's not ready to put in six months work. And I get that. Sometimes that can feel like a lot and feel overwhelming. So there are new offers there and I'm really feeling so good about that. And on to this week's guest. So Tara Nicole Kirk, we are going to talk about all kinds of stuff. Our conversation takes us in many directions, but as usual, we are tapping into her story, her personal story of healing and how she got to where she is today as a coach and a healer. She has a lot of really bright, alive energy, and I hope that uh, you get a lot out of the conversation. We're talking about trauma and healing and energetic alignment and inner critic work and how to step away from living and being in fear to healing our soul so that we can show up in the world fully and authentically as ourselves. 
and how that helps everybody. It helps us. It helps the people we're in relationship with. It helps our businesses. It helps us just be a human in the world. So without further ado, here's a little bit more about Tara and our wonderful conversation. Tara Nicole Kirk is a globally recognized author, transformation expert, and spiritual strategist. She helps small, successful people reach their potential and start living their big dreams by undoing their self-sabotage patterns. As the founder of Soul Tour, Tara has taught over 50,000 people how to stop hiding their light with her self-mastery method toolkit, which draws from neurobiology, depth psychology, and spiritual law. Tara also wrote the authoritative book on transformational business and has been featured in Forbes, Harvard Business Review, and the New York Times. Business Insider called her the number one woman Silicon Valley tech companies should add to their boards. Tara and I had a lick the plate delicious interview conversation. Oh, it just filled my soul and I really, ah, it was wonderful. So jump in, listen to it all. She offers a great freebie at the end. So don't skip out too soon. Let's get into it. Hi, Tara. Welcome to the Awaken Your Wise Woman podcast. Thanks for having me. I'm very excited to jump into our conversation. But for listeners who don't know who you are, could you share a little bit about yourself? I'm happy to. My name is Tara Nicole Kirk. I contain multitudes. <laughs> I'm a lot of things. Mm. I am a master coach. I'm an, I'm the author of the book called The Transformational Consumer, Fuel a Lifelong Love Affair with Your Customers by Helping Them Get Healthier, Wealthier, and Wiser. I'm the founder and CEO of Soul Tour, where we are equal parts personal growth school and coaching company and spiritual community. Mm. Sometimes people ask me what I do and I say... I do PR for God. (laughs) Wow. I do PR for God, but not the standard issue, white guy on a cloud sending down thunderbolts kind of God. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) More like the God that you were made out of, the God that is in you. Hmm. So a lot of what I do, my students call me the, the metaphysician. What I do is help people understand the universe and their place in it, who they really are, why they're really here, so that they might be their big selves and do their big dreams and do mm. all of that before they die. Wow. And for a lot of my clients, I, my background was in business. I was the CMO of My Fitness Pal, which is a big health and fitness app company that was acquired by Under Armour a few years back. And so a lot of my clients will go through this sort of journey of awakening that has a point along it that in which they like unlock a desire to build a a transformational business. Mm -hmm. And so then I am big on helping them do that in ways that are very kind of (laughs) countercultural and counterintuitive and aligned to who they really are. Yes, which is right. why I wanted to have you here on the podcast because the alignment oh, so is good. so important. It's literally all there. It's the small hinge that swings the big door, unlike the reasons we came here. Mm. It swings the big door on freedom, on wholeness, yeah, on joy, on healing, like for myself, for my clients, our businesses end up being big drivers of the healing that we need to have, like spiritually from trauma. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, it's very not unusual for me to send a client to psychedelic integration uh, for PTSD. Yeah, yeah. And the game changes and the world changes after you do that work. And surprise, surprise, the more you focus on alignment before all other things, alignment first, Thing life just gets so much easier. Your business gets easier. Yeah. You start to be like, wow, I I joke all the time. I'm like, 
My name is Tara Nicole Kirk, and I am recovering from an addiction to doing things the very hardest possible way. <laughs> <laughs> like that's my 12 step program. <laughs> it's like addiction to hard. Yeah. Oh. Addiction to perform, conform, produce conditioning that we've been like under the influence of since we were, oh, like one. I was going to say born, right? Yeah. 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 I don't know if you know this about me, but I have an interesting family situation. No, I do not know this. I have three children. Sometimes I'm like, I have 124 children because it feels like it, but I have three children. <laughs> they are currently 29 years old, 30 years old, and five years old. Wow. So I have this huge span. And in the interim 25 years was when I started to do this healing journey and awakening work of my own. And then as work, mm -hmm. so I kind of, my household is a bit of a like before and after lab. <laughs> I hear you. Yeah. Yeah. I apologize to my old kids all the time. I'm like, you guys got the first pancake mom. Sorry. About that. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, I that must have been a lot. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. My bad. <laughs> That's so funny. But I, I can totally relate. I can I don't have 25 years, but I have eight years between my oldest and youngest. Mm -hmm. And there was but a eight lot years of, of personal growth work is a lot. That's a lot yeah. of work. Yeah. And yeah. so I feel that I often teach about the conditioning and the programs we end up under running without trances, I like to call them, because they're like, so these are thoughts we've been thinking so long, we don't even know we're thinking them. We just think this is how the world works. And it's like, yeah. not. Yeah. Fear is one of them, scarcity is one of them, worthiness. But yeah, I used to say, well, I think maybe the trances in the programming starts about the time you acquire language. But now I've had this opportunity to see this, knowing what I know. And I'm like, no, it's like basically about the time they can start to understand your facial expressions. Yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah, sure. Well, because you think about what they're absorbing, even in the womb too, but yes. Yeah, that's real. Yeah. Right. Like as soon as they, in terms of the almost Pavlovian conditioning of it, as soon as, you know, kids, babies, human babies require adults for survival. Mm -hmm. Like they require, they require adult approval and attention for survival. Yeah. So there's like a biological imperative wired into them to be able to like look at an adult's face and see it. Like, are they frowning? <laughs> Are right. they happy? And yeah. you can see it really young. It's kind of wild. Once you're looking for it and you have yeah. access to little kids, you're like, wow. Yeah. That attunement is, it's genetic, right? It's, I mean, yes. it's, it's imprinted in us to, to be. Yeah. 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 So a lot of what I do is end up helping unwire. <laughs> so, <laughs> I mean, that's probably true for you too, right? Like, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. But I'm curious, like, what helped you unwire your stuff, like your trances, mm -hmm. the, the mm -hmm. stuff that was conditioned into you? I think I like my sacred contract, you know, of coming into this life was to, to have a core wound of the intense religious and family childhood repression. Mm. so that I might know that's what I was supposed to do in life <laughs> was to kind of be on a mission to undo, help undo that. Yeah. Yeah. And life, it's two things. I had a lot of like shocking events in my life from pretty young, mm. you know, as a teenage mom, which is not in general shocking, but in my world and my socioeconomic status and in my life now, a law degree from UC Berkeley and a master's degree and like these businesses and the Silicon right. Valley career and all that. It's unusual to meet someone who had a couple of kids when they were 17. Absolutely. So I've had like a series of life events that I chose to respond to in ways that cultivated the level of like radical acceptance and awareness and attunement and commitment to reparenting, mm -hmm. self-reparenting yeah. and healing 
And it's been, it's interesting because I can kind of look at the various shocking seasons. So my, my three children all actually have some level of special needs. Okay. Um, two are autistic and the middle one has a developmental disability. Mm-hmm. So raising them has, although I think this little one is the coming mutation of humanity. <laughs> I think she's like <laughs> the next, what the next kind of human is going to be actually awesome. fearless. <laughs> And magical creates with her thought. Mm. Doesn't think she needs to swing the hammer to change, to make a thing happen. And she doesn't. Yeah. So I think every one of those seasons, you know, losing everything in the great recession in 2008, like I've had, I was misdiagnosed with a chronic medical condition for 20 years and like literally couldn't walk for a while. Oh my gosh. Yeah, <laughs> these very like shocking things, especially for someone who kind of did a lot of the cultural, checked a lot of the cultural boxes of like, you're doing it right in life. Yeah. You know, yeah. I have like this very great education and my parents sent me to private schools and like all of these things. Yeah. But I think that path has been the real life stuff more than in, and business stuff and my business dreams and goals and creative projects and stuff, but more the real life events have, I shouldn't say they've required me to respond to react to them in a certain way, but my way of responding to and reacting them over time, each of those experiences kind of served as a gateway, a turning point moment where I chose to look at them as an opportunity to revisit the story I was living and like disrupt it. Yeah. So like, especially, I will say, especially in the 2008 recession, I was in real estate during the real estate recession. It was like real bad. Okay. Like bad. Yeah. It was also the time in which I learned what I know, create, started to create the practices and body of work that has become my like life's work. But I will say during that time was when I was like, oh my gosh, I'm losing my business. I'm losing my house. My old kids at the time had to split up because of the custody drama with their dad. Oh no. It was just like this. It was like thing after, at the time I was starting to complain about my medical stuff and the doctors were like, you look great. You're probably just working out too much. Oh my gosh. Just take some ibuprofen. Take a I'm so, it was, I'm like, you guys, something is there wronger is. than this. Yeah. But many fractures and stuff later, we would figure it out. That was a point in time where I was like, I had always been somewhat a fan of God <laughs> in like a somewhat new thought way, but also in a way in which I felt like I had a personal relationship mm-hmm. with this source spirit, all that is. I call it the God blob sometimes, depending on who I want to offend. <laughs> 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 depending on how horrified I'm okay with my mom being that we <laughs> like, wait, it's a very good blob. <laughs> um, the God blob is like the, you know, quantum energy, the creative, the limitless love and Spiritual infinite source. intelligence yeah. and oh. creative power that formed all worlds. And we're just all a droplet of that. We yeah. all were that and came into this body for this season to be and do and learn and have and create some things. Mm. And we're always that. What I find that to be just like, that's like the great news. <laughs> Isn't it? Is it it's yes. like, yeah, that we all have that within ourselves, yes. but sometimes we have trouble accessing But we forgot. It. Yeah. Something happens when spirit enters human form and enters this material world. Mm. Uh, Wordsworth, the poet used to say, we are born trailing clouds of glory, mm. which I love because it is a bit like there's an eph- ephemerality to your memory that that's what you are. Yeah. Like my kid is five. And I said to her the other day, she was like feeling down because she had done some <laughs> some crazy <laughs> and and she, and she was like down about it and I was like but you know you can't even you can't even be bad mm. and she was like but what like she was like what do you mean and I'm like well do you know you're made of God oh. and she was like oh I didn't know that <laughs> I didn't know that. And so like, that's a lot of what I end up doing with my clients. It's like, just 
finding ways to remind them they're made of that and they can flow that yeah. through into all, all kinds of other people through their work, through their businesses, through their books, through their brand, brands. Yeah. But so for you, reconnecting with that sense that you are one with yes. God, a part of God, part of the universe helped, it sounds like helped you reconnect with your source. Yes. And in that specific time of like what someone would call a dark night of the soul, where I was like, oh my gosh, what I realized for myself was I had made some one really like questionable decision early in life. And all the rest of my life, I had been performing in on the treadmill of checking off the boxes culture says are like what you're supposed to do. Mm. Straight A's and yeah, every right kind school, of extracurricular right. and all that stuff, careers, was lawyer, you know, all the stuff. Yeah. Internships, all of it. And it hadn't stopped unwanted things from happening in my life. Mm. Yeah. So that 2008 was like when I realized how much time and energy most of us spend checking boxes because we think it will stop unwanted things from happening to us in life. Yes. Oh my gosh. So true. Right? Yeah. And I was like, huh, is that why I've been doing all this stuff? Because <laughs> I'm, you know, I don't know if I stand behind that as the way I like decide what to pour my life force into when I think about it. <laughs> well, and it leaves you so sort of unprepared for the unwanted things that do happen because that's life. That I think is it had to all happen. <laughs> the whole shit had to hit all. All the fans, the fan. <laughs> every blade of the fan. <laughs> it was like, it was like, you know, those posts where people have a Roomba that runs through the dog poop. It was like that. Oh, I have not and seen I that, yeah. had been doing it all right. And so I think there was a, I like in, in, I teach the human design system and the guy who started human design, Rahu, Rahu uh, used to say that he had created the system in a way that it's a self-discovery system okay. of like types, basically archetypes. Mm -hmm. He had created the system in a way that would shatter people mm -hmm. out of their conditioning wow. and into their, and into their real selves. Now, I don't think shattering is always the best way to get someone call forth greatness from a person <laughs> So hear to be clear. But I think that's what was happening to me in that season was like all the onslaught of unwanted things that were kind of big and like catastrophic yeah, shattered me out of the delusion, the fantasy that I might perform at a level high enough or satisfactory enough for whoever the cosmic powers that be that no, nothing, nothing bad would ever happen to me. And so from that, point of view when that fantasy was gone I think there was an opening for me to be more I think first there was an untethering because then it was like okay well if I'm gonna hop off this treadmill and not just do stuff anymore because I think it's gonna stop bad things from happening then what do I do right <laughs> then right. what is my north star Mm. where what's my guidance and I realized then that you know that was an invitation for me to get really curious about who I really was and what my true self was and and to see what needed seeing, which was that I had a lot of unintegrated trauma and a lot I was still operating under the influence of fear and some of these trances in a way that like I had to go deep and deal with that stuff before I could even really meet my true self. Oh, I so relate you know to what that. I'm saying? I do. I do. I was gonna say I can sort of almost remember the day when I was like, oh my gosh, I am living every day from fear. <sighs> and it was just like, what? <laughs> It's wild because, and you know what? Because nobody really, really wants to talk about that, but most people are. Yeah. Most people are to the point where like, do you, did you ever read the four agreements? 
I have not, but I have heard it referenced so often. I should probably read you it. Should, you got to get that book. I went yeah. on to Amazon to order one to send someone the other day and Amazon reminded me. It said like, you've bought this title 22 <laughs> times. So I was like, yeah, because I just keep saying, I'm like, it's oh. the smallest life, life-changing life is book. Mm-hmm. And the four, the actual four agreements themselves are very game-changing if you even as, as aspirations not, you don't even have to like get them right all the time. <laughs> Just aspire to that. You're good. Yeah. But the front matter of the book is really brilliant. Okay. The setup for them is really brilliant in how he helps you understand like how we come to be conditioned and entranced by these programs. And one of the things he does is he says some of these, some of this conditioning that we have that's fear-based and very drama creating mm-hmm. in our worlds, because there's an inherent, there is an inherent drama that will be created if you are like, out of fear are thinking that you can stop bad things from happening because to your point, you can't. Right. That's not how life works. <laughs> that right. this is life. So any delusions that we persist under or participate in that run contrary to how life actually just works, right? Things yep. end. That's one. Things yep. end. Yep. That's part of life. I don't know why people don't want them. People are like, nope. <laughs> I think till death do us part conditioning got to people somehow. And they're like telling a story that things it's terrible. If things, if something ends. Yeah. So they don't make the endings that they need to make. Oh yeah. 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 But Don Miguel Ruiz in the four agreements talks about these conditioned programs that we all persist in and participate in at, he calls them like the dream of the planet. Mm. And I call him the nightmare of the planet. <laughs> I'll do respect and honor to him, actually. Because <laughs> I'm like, yeah, they're that. Because it's all, we just, we're making up. There is so much beauty and joy and miracle and expansion and growth and new birth and death to create space for new birth happening around us in this world, on this planet, all day, every day in mm. the numbering in the trillions or quadrillions of events every second right that like yeah there's bad news and the headlines in your facebook feed but the headlines in your facebook feed are getting a way disproportionate to reality oh share of gosh. your mental bandwidth yeah. right but that's but because everyone you know is living in fear every day mm-hmm. it just feels like it's almost like wild people when I suggest that, that there's another way. <laughs> well, it's probably a little terrifying, right? Yes. If I'm not yes. living in fear, then I'm not going to be preventing yes. all the things I'm imagining that might happen. I'll not be safe. This is the way. And that's the thing is like the fear based persona of your inner critic that like shits on whatever it is that you want to do or it will, I mean, anything, your inner critic, I think like a big epiphany for me and it is tends to be a big epiphany for my client is that the harsh hindering influence or voice of your inner critic is not only critical of you. Yeah. So like, it's not like if you don't have a tape in your head saying your butt's fat, you don't have an inner critic. Your inner critic will criticize anything to oh keep God. you in your lane, keep you feeling safe, keep you from feeling vulnerable, keep you from feeling exposed. Yeah. And like all the stuff that make all the stuff that answers your callings, it makes you feel that way. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> right. We've got to feel vulnerable in order to be truly heard and seen. And to self-express, um, there is like a joy in when you have built the skills. And that's the thing is like, I think in our like self-help world right now, there's a lot of, it's interesting. We're like in this moment where people are kind of sitting with like, okay, I should think positively, but love and light can be really toxic and, and bypassy. So I want to do my shadow work, but I don't want to get stuck there. And they're like <laughs> trying to figure out how to like, totally. I think a, one I think that there's like a willingness to be, to do your shadow work. And then there's a skill set for doing your shadow work. That is a different thing 
Mm. from just being willing to do it. Like I always hear people say like, oh, I'm, I want to process my trauma. And I'm like, okay, talking about your trauma is processing it, but that is not integrating and resolving it. <laughs> right, right. It may help you talk it through, but right, to transmute it or to, yeah, let it. Yes. Yeah. And I like the metaphor of under the influence of, because we all kind of know what that is like. So it's like, it's not that you have to, silence or slay these dynamics within you it's not like you're going to make them go away but you don't have to operate your life under the influence of them they don't get to drive to use elizabeth gilbert's old yes. visual yes yes so the idea that some of these most of it most people are living in fear or scarcity or unworthiness or trauma or under the influence of all of them literally every day yeah. Uh, I'll say most people in the Western world. True enough. True enough. Yeah. yeah. I don't think that's as, here's a great old story about the Dalai Lama meeting with some like American psychologists mm. and they ask him, one of them says like, what should we do about the problem of self-hate? Mm. And he, the Dalai Lama who like, doesn't speak great English, but does understand it pretty well and has a translator. He's like, come again? <laughs> like, excuse like, what me? Is that? What even is that? Mm. What do you mean? Wow. What? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, because so much is, I do think much of this conditioning, even though it happens a lot in a family, household, you know, family, school, individual basis, you know, trauma, individual, real life lived traumatic yeah. experiences. Yes. I think a lot of it is if you track it back is rooted in toxic capitalism and colonialism and white supremacy and patriarchy oh. and toxic religious institutions. Absolutely. There's a reason our parents thought your parents mostly love you. The right. reason they do this nonsense is because they think that's what good parenting is. It sets you up for success and then be a good little cog right. world. Right. Right. Follow right. the rules, do the right things. Don't, yeah. Get straight A's. Shh. Yeah. You're being too much. Yeah. <laughs> Shh. Yes. <laughs> like, yes. yes. And they're tired too because they're being good little cogs and they're not getting enough support. Absolutely. That's what they've learned too, right? From their, their, their parents and their parents and, and their, yep. Mm. Mm. So it runs deep and, I don't know. I see some real, I think we're watching, I, life gets really great when you zoom out to like universal perspective. Cause you're like, otherwise you're like, whoa, what is happening on my client calls it, my client Mia Togo, the yoga teacher calls it earth school. She's like, earth school is really intense right now. <laughs> earth school is really intense right now, but I'm like, ah, oh, you know, earth school's always been intense. Oh my gosh. You know, that is so you true. Study those ancient texts. There was some tomfoolery going on. <laughs> too. I was. I just read a historical fiction novel about the Henry VIII and that era. Mm -hmm. I'm like, fucked up shit was happening. <laughs> Crazy. No, actually, 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 not. I mean, like madness. Yeah, madness. 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 And so. It's helpful to see that in perspective and look, you know, zoom out. I think there was an old Martin Luther King quote about this, like that the long, mm. something like the long tail the trajectory of history is actually pretty great, yeah. you know, and you yes. can kind of start to see those like beats and where the, we're in the midst of all these institutions being totally dismantled and they're fighting to stay alive as human anything's do. Yeah. Yeah. Right. But like, yeah, but you there are get a glimpse of what a, yeah. 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 And things accelerate, I think, over time in human evolution, too. Yeah. You can see all of the like toxic binaries kind of mm -hmm. just falling apart. Yeah. Like that's no, the kids don't see gender or race or any of these things as binaries, maybe because they're not. Right. <laughs> you know right. Maybe, maybe we should be listening. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. it's like, it almost doesn't matter because the way human, human evolution works is like generations die. 
that is true. Yes. And they yes. take their and nonsense. Evolve. Right. <laughs> <with them. laughs> right. And it's yeah. kind of a hopeful thing to have a whole bunch of four and five-year-old friends because you're like, dang, these kids are great. <laughs> <laughs> these kids are not playing any of that mess. Oh, so it'll be, gosh. it's, you know, it's wild if you think their job, your job is to get them to comply with you. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> um, but if you think your job is to steward in the next kind of, oh. you know, season of human evolution gets to be kind of a fun ride. There you go. There you go. Well, Tara, I want to give you an opportunity to talk about the work you do with your clients and how you help them really embrace all these parts of themselves that need to, that want to shine through. Yeah. A lot of the work I do is I do some individual coaching. I do much more group programming. Mm-hmm. I see all of the work that I do, even though some of the work I do is business mastery work money mastery work, life mastery work, like how to do actual things. I see this as a transformation company, not a content company or like a coaching company. Okay. So like our people, we actually have all these efficacy measures. Are people actually coming through our work and doing different, being, we say DSD and BSD, doing something different and being something different. Wow. Are they doing that? Okay. So like, I think all of this work, most of us are signing up for programs or coaching or courses or groups because we think we need to make the right moves right? strategically. And I think that there is an 80-20 rule to that. And actually 80% of your success at any human endeavor in this season is based on your inner well-being, your spiritual well-being, your wholeness, your liberation from the programs, all that. Mm. So I think of all of our work is self-mastery work. Even business mastery work is self-mastery work. It's just the metric for whether it's working or not is like revenue or whatever, but also joy and also alignment. Yes. So we, in the, we, I have what I call the self-mastery method and every program I teach runs through that sequence of steps with people on the topics that are, you know, specifically addressed in the program. And the sequence of steps is recalibrate, actualize, align. Mm -hmm. So recalibration is a lot about waking up from those trances. Yeah. It's a lot about answering your spiritual alarm clocks. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. It's some about answering your callings that the ones that won't leave you alone, (laughs) even though you keep running from them. (laughs) They don't go away. (laughs) Spoiler alert. They don't go away. (laughs) So you should just call me so we can help you answer them because they're not going away. So there's a lot of that recalibration, which is paradigm shifting. It's like letting, it's, uh, you know, unwiring, deconditioning, and it's like building in a platform and, and foundation of new empowered, I think, metaphysically correct. Mm beliefs and thoughts yeah and then for some people it's like healing from trauma there's all this stuff in there so that and all of these steps are really the work of a lifetime yeah um and the actualized step gets really interesting because actualize is like seeking the answer to the question who is your true sacred self when you're no longer under the influence of your trances Mm. and i find that people very naturally get to a step of like psychological healing and belief work where they very naturally start to seek out systems like Enneagram or Myers-Briggs or whatever. And so we teach a couple of systems that we know are very, very highly useful to people who want to become soulful self-actualizers. We teach the human design system Mm -hmm. and we teach um, the sacred money archetypes. So we have a program that's just like a six week deep dive into your sacred money archetypes which helps you understand like why you do what you do with respect to money, Mm. but also because money, the way you do money is the way you do everything. It starts to, it's like actually a really beautiful light entry to shadow work (laughs) and to self-sabotage healing. Yeah. But you will make more money when you're done. That's kind of the, yeah. that's the, that's the happy accident. (laughs) Right, right, right. As Um, you healed that relationship. Yeah. Yeah. It's real good. Yeah. We have a program called the Inner Critic Cure, which is a much deeper dive, walk through the shadow work. Mm. You come out the other end kind of in in the light. 
And then we have some business programs. And that's mostly what I do is spend my time in the business programs. I have this idea that the next empires will be empires of the soul. Mm. They will be business empires that are generating both profit for their founders and transformation for their customers. And they will also be very self-expressive for the creators. That's the empire's part. So people are writing books and building personal brands that are based on very countercultural messaging (laughs) because it's not even about whether it performs. It's like this business is intended to actually like give voice to your, it fulfills your sacred contract. So that's why you're doing it. And oh, by the way, we'll teach you to do it in ways that make you a lot of money. So, and we have like different um, ways into the empires of the soul program based on whether people are in like startup up to 250K in revenue mode, or if they're already generating over 250K in revenue, they get to work a little more closely with me to create what they're creating. Those are, those are the programs we do we have this beautiful live event in the fall called Upgrade Your Money and Your Life. Mm-hmm. That's kind of like a very luxurious, sexy take on Black church. <laughs> oh, oh, wow. So it's very exuberant. Yeah. People listening to the podcast, I'm Black, so it's okay for me to say that. Oh. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> they may not know. <laughs> so it's very exuberant. It's very effervescent. It's very electric. It's like a beautiful energy and vibration raise. Mm. And it's also, it gets you deep into like what your path of self-mastery is and what are the, what are the gateways that open up for you? The things that you most, what are the components that desire you to create them of the life that you were born to live? And so it's like really beautiful. So we do that in October. Nice. And that's like the business. Um, A lot of the business is like, us modeling transparently what it means to build an alignment first business. Yeah. And my life is relatively demanding. I have three special needs kids in the process of moving to Portugal from the West coast of America of the United States. So there's just like all this other stuff happening that I'm very transparent about with my students and my audience. Yeah. Yeah. And if it all sounds amazing, all of the stuff you offer and just your energy. I don't know. I just could see that it all sounds lovely and worthwhile. I mean, you know, to, to be more in touch with yourself, to better yourself in business and life. Like how great is that? It's pretty great. So if you had some piece of wisdom for the listeners out there, what would you share? Ooh, I've been working with this idea. I don't have like slick talking points to it, <laughs> but I do have it as like lived experience. That's true for me and a lot of people I've been working with, which is that I think there's a somewhat conventional wisdom out there. That's like, if you want to be happy, you should just kind of want less. Mm. And my experience, and I've, I've observed thousands and thousands of people. I say, what I do is I help people be their big selves and do their big dreams before they die. And people show up and they're like, but I've been trying to do these dreams my whole life. And I'm like, yeah, but it seems like your dream or goal is just a bunch of shit you actually hate. Is that true? And they're like, yeah, <laughs> it is. And I'm like, okay, so yeah, that's why you're not doing it. So it's maybe less that that person has a self-sabotage problem and more that that person needs to allow themselves to dream a better dream. Sometimes to even dream a bigger, more challenging dream. So I'll say that because I think a lot of business people and like academics in specific, we have this idea, you got to start small and like do things, all the hard things when you're paying your dues, you got to pay your dues. And then like, you can't dare set a big vision or dream or goal until you've like accomplish the incremental component parts of that. Mm -hmm. And what I have experienced is very much the opposite, that you have a unique in your wiring and design. There is a level of game you came here to play. And if you're trying to aim too low, you won't hit it. Hmm. You won't, you will not even succeed at the low little things at the play small things. And so I've worked with a bunch of people who like, I was like, no, dude, we need to like make some baller, <laughs> set a baller vision, upgrade the vision, expand the vision. And there's like this energy or life force or something that comes to them then. And when you get 
when you just make a commitment to play the game of life at the level you came here to play it, opportunities start showing up, resources open up, you start thinking more, things just change, the energetics of it change. Right, right. Right. And so that's, I like, I keep thinking about that. Some of y'all aren't achieving what you want to achieve because you don't really want to achieve it. (laughs) And you might actually do better with a bigger, even more aggressive dream, but it should be a delicious dream. It should be, it should be like a lick the plate of life dream. Mm, It should be like delicious where it feels like, oh my gosh, just to get to work on that would be awesome. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. That energy. Things shift. Yes. That energy shifts and stuff starts to be possible. That was not possible before. And Mm -hmm. so I'm just that my message is to give somebody permission (laughs) to dream of a dream for their life. that like feels like looking in the plate. Ah, I love that. No matter what you've done before now or not done or what has worked or not worked, it's irrelevant. Totally irrelevant. Yeah. Mm, Beautiful. So how do people find you? All right. I'd love, I'm going to offer you two different ways you can find me. The Mm -hmm. first has a gift associated. So you can come to soultour.com slash affirmations. Yes. You'll enter your information there for my Transformation Tuesday newsletter. Every week I send out a free lesson that helps smart, successful people reach their full potential and live the lives they were born to live. When you enter your information on that page, you'll get a couple of things. You'll get some affirmations to soothe your inner critic, which as I was talking about before, your inner critic is the voice of fear within you, self-doubt, hesitation. It's the number one root cause of self-sabotage. And this set of affirmations really soothes that like inner resistance to your own dreams, heals your inner critic and begins to unlock your power to create what you came here to create. You'll also get a little bonus audio training I recorded on how to breathe new life into your old dreams. Because like I said, they ain't going nowhere. <laughs> They're going to keep after you. Right. And if you're on that list, you end up also getting like all of my invitations to live events and and that kind of thing. Invitations to our challenges and different things that we run. Yeah. Now, it, uh, for those of you who have a business, or, you know, if you identify as a transformational author or leader or entrepreneur, We are currently enrolling in the Empires of the Soul programs, which are the business and life and self and money mastery programs. Awesome. It's like kind of like mentorship and coaching and consulting and community all in one. And you can submit an application to that program to to do a call with someone who can help you understand what the program is and whether you're a good fit for it at soultour.com slash apply. So it's S O U L. T O U R dot com slash apply. Awesome. I will put all of these links that I've gotten from you and your PR company and the ones you just shared and put them in the show notes so people can Thanks. find them easily. Thank you so much. Oh my gosh. This what was a fun conversation. Oh my gosh. This was amazing. Always, I get so blown away by the women I get the privilege to talk to, but I really enjoyed this hundred percent. I, I love to like put little like A pluses on the conversation. <laughs> and I'm like, this was the best. But anyway. I love it. I love it. I'm happy to come back anytime. Awesome. Well, thanks, Tara. And uh, yeah, I hope we get to talk again. We shall. We shall. Take care. I don't know about you, but I think that maybe was my favorite conversation so far this year in this season of the podcast, but I don't know. We've got a lot of good, wise, amazing women that are just so willing to share their stories, so willing to open up and be real and talk about spirit and soul and transformation. And mm, I just just so appreciated Tara taking the time to talk with us and her stuff sounds just absolutely amazing. Her work, her self-work, clearly a beautiful thing. And what a great offer, freebie that y'all can to get you all can get a hold of. Soultour.com forward slash affirmations. So I know I'm gonna sign up for that. I just thought that 
her sharing that alignment was the small hinge for the big door of so many things that it opens up when we are fully aligned. It just opens up so many doors within, without. It just can shift all the dynamics in our life. And that to me was just so, so powerful. And really just one powerful piece and a hugely amazing conversation. So I hope you enjoyed it as well. And I hope you will check out her stuff. If this interview has inspired you to know more about the podcast, you can sign up for it to be delivered directly to your inbox. Episodes twice a month. And you will also get my newsletter and reflections from me as well as offers. Go to elizabethcushcoaching.com forward slash sign up and you will be in it. You will get it. You will get it all. All right. Well, take care of yourselves. I hope you all have a wonderful week. And I look forward to connecting with you next time here on the podcast. Thanks for listening to the Awaken Your Wise Woman podcast. The information in this podcast is not a substitute for seeking help from a licensed mental health professional. Music by Andy Cush, sound editing by Laura Disler, and show notes by Kathy Cush. If you'd like more information about me, Biz Kush, and the resources shared today, go to awakenyourwisewoman.com.